First question says write the number of 40,033 in figures. So 40,033. Find the value of the cube root of 729. 729 is basically 3 to the power of 6. So if we take the cube root of 3 to the power of 6, that's going to be 3 to the power of 6 times 1 over 3, which is 3 squared, and that is 9. Question C says, find the reciprocal of 7 over 9. Give your answers a decimal correct to three decimal places. So reciprocal of 7 over 9 is going to be 9 over 7. We swap the numerator and denominator with each other. When we divide the two, we get 1.286, correct, to three decimal places. Find the value of 6 to the power of 5 divided by 3 to the power of 4. So let's write that as a fraction. 6 to the power of 5 is basically 7,776. And 3 to the power of 4 is 81. When we divide those, what we get is 96. Next part says work out negative 9 times negative 7 divided by negative 3. So in bid mass, if we have multiplication and division, then we go from left to right. So first we will solve negative 9 times negative 7, which will equal to 63 divided by negative 3. 63 divided by negative 3 is going to be negative 21. Then work out 11 plus 9 times 5 minus 4. Once again, bid mass. Over here, as you can see, we have addition, we have multiplication, and we have subtraction. In bid mass, multiplication comes before addition and subtraction. So what we'll do is we will solve this part first. That's going to be 11 plus 45 minus 4. Now we do addition first. So 11 plus 45 is going to equal 56. And 56 minus 4 is going to be 52. That is your answer. Then we have brackets 11 plus 9 times 5 minus 4. Bid mass once again. We will do brackets first. So that's going to be 20 times 5 minus 4. Since we did brackets first, now we're going to do 20 times 5 because multiplication comes before subtraction. That is 100 minus 4. That's going to be 96. Part G, says fine. Part G says from this list, write down an irrational number. So an irrational number is that number which cannot be expressed as a fraction. Negative 0 0.67 can be expressed as a fraction as negative 67 over 100. Root 49 can be written as 7. 5 over 9 already is a fraction. And 3.142 is 22 over 7. So the only irrational number over here is square root 123. Because if you check the value square root 123 in your calculator, that's going to give you 11.0905. So like it's, a long, like it's a very long number. So root 123 is your irrational number. Then find the lowest common multiple of 24 and 104. So for 24 and 104, let's write those down. We know that two twelves are 24 and two times 52 is 104. Two times six is 12 and two times 26 is 52. Two times three is six and two times 13 is 26. Three and 13 are both prime numbers and not divisible by the same numbers. So This is all one now. So lowest common multiple is going to be the product of these numbers. That's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 
times 3 times 13, which is going to equal 312. That is the lowest common multiple between 24 and 104. And find the highest common factor of 24 and 104. So highest common factor is 8. Because 24 is 8 times 3. And 104 is 8 times 13. So highest is 8. Question 2 says, complete the statement. The mathematical name of any polygon with four sides is called a quadrilateral. Three of these shapes are drawn on the grid. Describe fully the single transformation that maps the shaded shape onto shape A. So we're talking about this from this. So as you can see, there's like a rotation in the shape of the shaded shape. This length over here is now basically this one. And this length is this one. This is this, and obviously the fourth one, this is this. So as you can see, there has been a rotation in the clockwise direction. Rotation, clockwise direction, and rotation is of 90 degrees clockwise and for the center the center is 0 0 by because if we look at the distance of this point from 0 0 one un two units horizontally and one unit vertically and same point over here now it's two units vertically and one unit horizontally because we have rotated it 90 degrees so center is 0 0 Then describe fully the single transformation that maps the shaded shape onto shape B now. So now if you look at the shaded shape and shape B, the direction in which the shape is placed is exactly the same, but what's different is the size. Shape B is smaller, the shaded shape. If you compare this length with this length, This is one, two, three units. And this is 1.5 approximately. To find the scale factor, I'm going to divide the new shape's length by the old shape's length. So 1.5 divided by 3 is 1 over 2. So this is your scale factor. And now we have to figure out what is the center of enlargement. So to figure out the center of enlargement, I'm going to match the same points on both the shapes. So this with this, then I'm going to use a different color for the other line. This with this. This with this. Now, as you can see, all of these all of these lines are passing from the same point, which is this point over here. This is the common point where all of these lines are passing. So that is seven and negative eight. So your center is seven negative eight. That is your center of enlargement that's how you find it and it says on the grid draw the image of the shaded shape after a transition by the vector 9 negative 6 so for the shaded shape to go to 9 negative 6 what I'm going to do is we're going to add 9 
to the x coordinate and subtract 6 from the y coordinate. So if you look at the first point, negative 2, 1, if we add 9, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And when we go 6 down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's going to be the first point. And for this point, 9 to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And 6 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's going to be winding it up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah. And then for this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This and then this. Oh, wait. This is where it is. Yeah. So this is your translation from the vector 9, negative 6. We moved the x coordinate 9 units to the right side. Right. And 6 units down. That's how you translate an object uh, based on the given vector. And it says the shaded shape after reflection, the line y equals to negative 1. Let's draw a line at y equals to negative 1 first. Now the reflection is going to be a mirror image in this line. So the distance of each point from line y equals to negative 1 is going to be equidistance on the other side as well. So this point is going to come over here because of the distance of two units. This point has a distance of three units. So one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm gonna connect these two. And this is oh, one, two, I think this is seven, yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to be over here. And this is three units. So one, two, three. So this is your mirror image in the line of y equals to negative one. As you can see, it's the same size and everything. The only thing that's happened is that now it's upside down. Question three says, these are the test scores of 16 students. Complete the stem and leaf diagram. So for the category of just uh, values less than 10, we have nine over here. Then for the values between 10 and 19, we have 15. So we're gonna write five over here and 18, which is eight. So let's cut these out. Then for the 20s, we have 20. 23 and we have 26 so this this and this cuts out and for the 30s we have 31 32 34 36 37 and 39 so let's eliminate those as well and lastly for the 40s we have 40 two 41s and 145 that is just stem and leaf now, in the next part, it says, find the mode, median, and range. For the mode, that is your highest frequency. So which one of these numbers has the highest frequency in this data, in, the, in this data set? So as you can see, 41 comes twice. So that means the mode is going to be 41. There's no other number that's repeated twice or like more than twice. Then for the median, that is your middle value. 
So middle value is over here is since we have an even number of data values, which is 16, that means it's going to be the eighth and the ninth value. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These are the two values, eighth and ninth, and we find the different and we find the middle value of eighth and ninth value. Why? Because if you look before the eighth value, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values. And after the ninth value, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values again. So two and four are right in the middle of this data set. And the middle of two and four will be the median value. So that is going to be 32 plus 34 over two, which is 33. Always remember to add the tens as well. Just don't find the uh, just don't find the average of two and four. It has to be thirty two plus thirty four. So thirty three is our median, and range is your difference of the maximum and the minimum value. Maximum is forty five, and minimum is nine. So forty five minus nine is going to equal thirty six. So that's your mode median and range. Let's just complete the bar chart for the test course of the 16 students and work out the percentage of students with a test score of 40 or more. So for 10 to 19, we had two students. For 20 to 29, we had three students. For 30 to 39, we had six students. And lastly, for 40 to 49, we had four students. So if I make this, for the first one, it's going to be like this. For the second one, it's going to be like this. Third one is this. And the last one, is this. Then it says, work out the percentage of students with a test score of 40 or more. So 40 or more is basically this bar. So that's four students. So four over the total, which was 16 times 100, that is 25%. Question four says the diagram shows the net of a solid on a one centimeter square grid. When the net is folded to make the solid, point C will join with point A. Write down which other point will join with point A. So this is point A. So when you fold it, point A will connect at the top face, which is this one. So technically speaking, A will join G as well because when you fold it, G will be at like the face G, F, H, I will be on the top and G will connect with point A. So that's G over here. And it says calculate the total surface area of the solid. So for the total surface area, let's find the area of each of these faces. For, I'm going to start with the first one. For A, B, N, M, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So five times six, which is 30. That's one phase. Then for the base over here, that is B, M, B, M, E, J, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine times six, which is 54. Now for the trapezium faces, so that's C, D, E and B, and we times that by two because the two faces. So one over two times the height, which is four, times the sum of parallel sides. So that's going to be one, two, three, 
plus nine, and that is going to equal forty eight. Then your E F I J is going to be the same as A B N M, which is thirty. Then F G H I is going to be three times six, which is eighteen. Now, if we add all of these up for the total surface area, that's going to be 30 plus 54 plus 48 plus 30 plus 18. That's going to equal. So 180 centimeter square is a total surface area of this net. So let's just complete the statement. The solid is a prism with the cross section in the shape of a trapezium. Draw a sketch of the solid. So sketch of the solid is going to look something like this. Part B says the diagram shows the cuboid. The volume of the cuboid is 540 centimeter cube. Calculate the value of x. Volume of a cuboid has a formula of length times width times height. This is your length, this is your width, and this is your height. We're going to do 540 equals to x times 6 times 6 which is 540 equals to x times 36. Divide 540 by 36. And that is going to give you 15 centimeters for x. Antonio buys a restaurant for $240,000. This is 5 eighth of the amount he has available to spend. Show that he has $144,000 left after buying the restaurant. So what we're going to do is we're going to put to 40,000 equal to 5 over 8 of x. x is your total amount. We're first going to find the total amount, then subtract that from 240 to find the remaining amount. So 240,000 times 8 over 5, and that is going to give you $384,000. Now to show that he is left with 144, I'm going to subtract 240 from this. And that's $144,000. In part B, it says some of the $144,000 is spent on expenses. Expenses are wages, equipment, and supplies in the ratio 9 is to 5 is to 8. The amount spent on wages is 45000 Find the amount spent on equipment and supplies. So we have 9 is to 5 is to 8. On wages, we are spending 45,000. So return 9 to 45,000, you have to multiply that by 5,000, which means we multiply 5,000 with all of these numbers. So for equipment, we get 25,000. And for supplies, we get 40,000. So equipment is this, and supplies is this. Work out the amount Antonio has left now. So to figure out the amount that Antonio is left with, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract all of these from 144. That means 144,000 minus 25,000 minus 40,000 and minus 45,000. The expenses for wage, equipment, and supplies. And that would give you $34,000. Part C says Antonio borrows $25,400 for six years at a rate of 5% per year simple interest. Calculate the total amount he repays at the end of six years. 
that's going to be 25,400 plus the interest amount, which is going to be the principal amount, 25,400 times the interest rate, which is five over 100, and the time period, which is six. So you solve that and you should get 25,400 plus 7,620, which is your interest amount. Interest amount. So we add that to the principal amount and that equals to 33,020. That is what he repays at the end of six years. In one week, the number of customers in the restaurant was 560. In the next week, the number of customers in the restaurant was 656. Calculate the percentage increase. Calculate the percentage increase. We subtract the old value and the new value and divide by the old value. And lastly, times by the 100 because we're trying to find the percentage. So that, that is going to be 656 minus 560 over, over 560 times 100. That is going to equal 17.14 percentage. Question six is complete the table of values for y equals to five plus three x minus x square. We can substitute x equals to negative two, zero, one, three, and four in this quadratic equation to find the corresponding y values. So for negative two, y equals to five plus three times negative two minus two square. 5 minus 6 minus 4, and that is going to equal negative 5. Then we do for 0. So let's replace the value with 0 now. So 0 and 0. That's 5. Then we do it for 1. So that is going to be 5 plus 3 minus 1, which is 7. Then for 3 and 4, 3, that's going to be 5 plus 9 minus 6, which is going to equal to I was wondering 5 plus 9 minus 9, which is again 5. And then for x equals to 4, 5 plus 3 times 4, 5 plus 3 times 4 minus 4 squared, that's going to be 5 plus 12 minus 16. And that is going to equal 1. So these are our coordinates. I'm going to write these down separately so that it's easy for us to plot them. Negative 2, negative 5, negative 1, 1, 0, 5, 1, 7, 2, 7, 3, 5, 4, 1, and 5, negative 5. First point is negative 2 and 5. Negative 2 and 5. Is, first point is negative 2 and negative 5. So that is here. Negative 1 and 1. That is here. 0, 5. There, 1, 7. I barely see anything. And I hope that is correct. Then two seven. Three 
And what's it called? Four one. And five negative five. Yeah. So if we connect these, that's gonna be so anxiety. Use my free hand. Get him. Okay. That is a graph. Now they want us to find write the equation of the line of symmetry of the graph. Line of symmetry is going to be in the middle of this. So that's going to be 1.5. Yeah, x equals to 1.5 is going to be a line of symmetry. Complete the table of values for y equals to 2x plus 1. So to complete the value of y equals to 2x plus 1, we substitute the values. y equals 2 times negative 1 plus 1, which is negative 2 plus 1, and that's negative 1. Then y equals to 2 times 0 plus 1, which is 1. And then y equals to 2 times 2 plus 1, which is 5. So this is the table. And then they want us to sketch the graph on the grid and find the points where the two graphs intersect. So the coordinates we have over here are negative 1 and negative 1. We have 0, 1, and we have 2, 5. So if you plot these, negative 1 and negative 1 is going to be over here. 0, 1 is here, and 2, 5. Is over here. Now, if we connect these two, this is what the line should look like. Y equals to x plus one. So our intersection points are basically this and this, this and this. These are intersection points. So first point is going to be x equals to 2 2.4, 2 2.4 and 6 actually approximately. And over here it's going to be x equals to 1, 8, negative 1.7 and uh, negative two approximately once again since it's like a rough sketch and the next question says that the diagram shows a circle center with points b d and e on the circumference a o e f is a straight line the straight line a c touches the circle at b write on the mathematical name of b o d b o d is basically this line. So since it's passing from the center and it's touching the circumference, that means it's the diameter. So this will be the diameter. 
then it says line A, B, C. So let's go to the graph again. Let's go to the diagram again. A, B, C is this line. So that is your tangent because it's touching the circumference of the circle. So that is going to be your tangent. This is right on the two geometrical reasons why AOB is 62. So AOB, they're saying is 62. Why? Because firstly, when a tangent touches the circle, the angle the radius makes with the tangent is always 90. Angle radius makes with the tangent is always 90 degrees. Since we have the second angle, which is 28, and we have to find the third angle, we know sum of angles of a triangle equals 180 degrees. So for angle AOB, I will do 180 minus 90 minus 28. That's going to be 62. So this is your first reason and this is your second reason. And it says, give the geometrical reason why DOE is also 62. Now DOE is this, and this was 62. Reason why DOE is also 62 is because vertically opposite angles are equal. So since this angle is vertically opposite to this angle, so this would also be 62. We have to find the angle DEB, ODE, and BEF. So DEB is going to be DEB is going to be 90. Why? Because whenever you have an angle coming out of the diameter or like an angle in the semicircle, that's always going to be 90 degrees. ODE this one. So we said this is 90. This is 62. OD and OE is equal because they both are the radius. So this is an isosceles triangle. So to find ODE, we will do 180 minus 62 divided by 2, which is going to give us 59. So that is your answer for that. And then lastly, find BEF. B E F is this angle. We know this is this is 59 because I saw this 59 and 62. So we know the entire angle D E B was 90. So to find angle O E B, we will do 90 minus 59 which is going to give us 31. And then to find this angle, B, E, F, I will do 180 minus 31. Why? Because angles on a straight line equal to 180. So this over here is 31. So this would be 180 minus 31, which is going to equal to 149. That is your answer. Write down two geometrical properties that show that a polygon is regular. So to show that a polygon is regular, we have equal sides and equal angles. Work out the interior angle of a regular 10-sided polygon. So the formula for that is n minus 2 times 180 over n. n is 10, 
that's going to be 10 minus 2 times 180 divided by 10, which is going to be 8 times 180 over 10. And that is basically equal to 144. Question 8 says, two friends Diego and Javier meet at a swimming pool. The travel graph shows Diego's journey by bicycle from his home to the swimming pool. So they've already shown that. Calculate Diego's speed for his journey from his home to the swimming pool. Give your answer in kilometers per hour. In a distance time graph, your slope of the graph gives us the speed. So we're going to find the slope of this line, which would be m equals to, this is our point over here, and this is our point over here. So y value is 6 minus 0 x value is going to be between each point. There is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's a difference of 30 minutes between each interval and there's 6 boxes between 10 and 10.30. So we can say that each small box represents 5 minutes. So that means over here this is going to be 10.40. So we do 10, 40 minus 10, which is going to be 6 over 40. Now, keep in mind this 40 is in, in minutes. We have to find the speed in hours. So, you multiply the speed by 60. That's going to be 6 over 40 times 16. That's 9 kilometers per hour. If they're saying that give the speed in kilometers per minute, then it would just be 6 over 40. Diego stays at the swimming pool until 12.20. On the grid, draw the line representing the time he stays at the swimming pool and work out how long in hours and minutes he is at the swimming pool. So if he's at the swimming pool till 12.20, that's going to be there. So I'm going to draw a line from here. These are the pole till this point. Then it says, uh, work out how long in hours and minutes he's at the swimming pool. So if he's reached the swimming pool at 1040 and he's over there till 1220. From 1040 to 1140, he spent one hour. From 1140 to 12, he spent 20 minutes. And then from 12 to 20, he's spending another 20 minutes. So in total, he's spending one hour and 40 minutes at the swimming pool. Javier leaves his home 15 minutes later. San Diego. He walks to the swimming pool at a constant speed of 6 kilometers per hour. On the grid show Javier's journey from his home to the swimming pool. So now he's leaving his home 15 minutes later than Diego. So that means he's leaving at 10.15. So this is where he starts his journey. And He's walking for six kilometers per hour, which means he's going to end at 10.55 and 6. So 10.55 is going to be 10 at this point. So this is his girl. Now, why is he stopping at 10, 55, and 6? We know that the speed is 10. We know that the speed is 6. And they've given us the initial distance, which is 10, and the final distance, which is 6. So 6 minus 10 over, we know the final time, which is going to be x. But we know the starting time, which is 10, 15. So if we cross multiply, x minus 10, 15 is equal to negative 4 over 6. Okay. So 
once again, we know that they're taking the distance in hours. So we have to multiply this negative 4 over 6 by 60 to convert it into hours. So negative 4 over 6 times 60 is basically 40 minutes. So if you take the 10, 15 to the other side, 40 plus 10, 15, that is going to be 10, 55. So that's how we get the final stopping time, which is 10.55. We already know the distance at which the school is present, which is 6. And the distance at which Javier starts from his house, which is 10. So the only unknown was the final time. So that's how we got our line. The next part that says they both leave the swimming pool at 12.20 and return to their homes, each at a constant speed. Diego arrives home at 12.45. Javier arrives home five minutes later than Diego. Complete the travel graph. So they both leave the swimming pool at 12.20. Yeah, okay. This is for him. And they're saying Diego is reaching home at 12.45. Thirty, forty, forty-five. No. Thirty, forty, forty-five. This is Diego's. Now Javier. Okay. He's also at the pool till twelve twenty. Then he he arrives home five minutes later than Diego. To draw Javier's journey, he's five minutes late, so it's gonna stop over here. Yeah, so that's the complete draw for both of them. Tonight, it says Maria spins a fair seven sided spinner numbered one to seven. Explain why the probability that the spinner lands on a prime number is four over seven. Because if you look at the numbers, we have prime numbers. And that's 2, 3, 5, and 7. We have 4 prime numbers. So the probability would be 4, which is the number of prime numbers, divided by the total number of numbers, which is 7. Hence, 4 over 7. Part B shows a tree diagram. It says that Maria spins the spinner a second time. We have to complete the tree diagram. So if the probability of the spinner landing on a prime number is 4 over 7, the probability of it not landing on a prime number would be 3 over 7, which is 1 minus 4 over 7. And that's 3 over 7. So prime, again, would be 4 over 7. Not prime, 3 over 7. 4 over 7 and 3 over 7, okay. Then work out the probability that the spinner lands on a prime number both times. So to land on a prime number both times, the route we're going to follow is going to be this and this. That is the only route that shows that the spinner is landing on a prime number both times. So that is going to be 4 over 7 times 4 over 7, which is 16 over 49. That is your probability of the spinner landing on prime number both times. Question 10A says that the diagram shows a right angle triangle ABC. In a semicircle, the radius of the semicircle is 4.5 centimeters. AC is 8.9 and BC is 13.2. Calculate the shaded area and give the units of your answer. And then they want to calculate the length of AB. So for the shaded area, Area 1 is going to be the area of the triangle. So that's going to be 1 over 2 times 13.2 times 8.9. The formula we're using is 1 over 2 times base times height. This is your base and this is your height. So when we solve that, we get 58.74 centimeter square. Now, area of the semicircle, which is going to be area 2. 
that's going to be pi r square divided by 2. That's going to be pi times 4.5 square over 2. And that is going to equal 31.81 centimeter square. So shaded area would be the difference of 58.74 and 31.81. And that is going to equal 26.93 centimeter square. That is your answer. Then we have to find the length of AB. So AB is this length over here. Since AB is this length and uh, the triangle is right angle triangle, we can use Pythagoras, which means AB square, which is the hypotenuse, would equal to BC square plus AC square. AB would equal to square root of 13.2 square plus 8.9 square. And that is going to give us 15.92 centimeters. That is your answer.